Let's start our exploration of the architecture with the coordinator. And by architecture, I mean what we plan to build in this course. Starting with the coordinator, think about it as the brain of the Presto system. I actually like to think about the coordinator as the linchpin that connects different components of the Presto system. On the one hand, we have the workers responsible for processing data and getting results. On the other hand, we have the clients. And in our case, we're going to take a good look at three different clients, starting with the Presto CLI. The Presto CLI is typically used by SQL users. The next client we're going to consider is Tableau. Now, Tableau is typically used by BI users. And the final client we're going to consider is RStudio. And RStudio is used by data scientists. So far, we've just mentioned one user type for each of these different clients. But to be clear, there are other user types for these different clients. And there are many more clients out there. We're just going to consider these three in this course. Now, users submit queries to clients. Clients now send these queries to the coordinator. Once the coordinator receives the query, it parses it, analyzes it, and compiles it into a query plan. Now, based on that query plan, the coordinator distributes and schedules tasks across the different worker nodes. Now, once the data processing is done, the coordinator retrieves the results from the workers and sends it back to the client that originally issued the query. Now, the coordinator knows how to reach each worker because each worker has to register itself with something called the discovery service. And by the way, the communication between the coordinator and the clients and the coordinator and the workers is all done through a REST API. Typically, you have separate nodes for the coordinator and the worker. In addition, you also have multiple workers. But in our case and in this course, we're going to install the coordinator and the worker, in this case, a single worker, on my MacBook Pro, meaning that we're installing it on a single node. Let's move on to the data side of things. In order to gain access to a data source, you will need to add the data source as a .properties config file within the catalog folder. In this first case, the data source is HDFS, and the configuration file is called hive.properties. Now, unlike other data sources, the HDFS data source also requires a Hive Metastore. Same thing goes with something like S3. But as I'll show you as we look at other different data sources, like MySQL, Kafka, we don't need the Hive Metastore, but we do need the dot .properties file. I know there's a lot to unpack here, but I assure you, we'll cover all of this in detail as we go through this course. For the MySQL data source, we'll create a config file called mysql.properties and save this file in the catalog folder. Similarly, for the Kafka data source, we'll create a file called kafka.properties and again, we'll save this in the catalog folder. So these are the three different data sources we plan to use in this course. A couple of points before concluding this video. This entire setup, that is Tableau, Presto CLI, RStudio, Presto Coordinator, Presto Worker, HDFS, Hive Metastore, MySQL, and Kafka will be installed and run on my MacBook Pro. One other thing to mention is that in order to use HDFS and Hive Metastore, we will also have to install Hadoop and Hive respectively. To be clear, this course is strictly focused on Presto. Although we will show how to install Hadoop, Hive, MySQL, Kafka, we will not go into much details about these systems. The expectation is that you either already know about these systems or can quickly ramp up on them on your own.